Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Pentaho World 2017. Brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. Welcome, welcome back to sunny Orlando, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. And this is our second day covering Pentaho World 2017. theCUBE was here in 2015 when Pentaho was just, had just been recently acquired by Hitachi. We then, let's see, around September time frame, we saw Hitachi rebrand as Hitachi, as Hitachi Data Systems rebrand as Hitachi Ventara, bringing together three components of its business. The Hitachi Data Systems business, the Hitachi Insights business, and of course, the Pentaho Analytics platform. Yes. And um, we heard yesterday from Brian Householder, the president and COO of uh, Hitachi Ventara, uh, what the strategy was. I thought he was a very crisp, clear presenter. The strategy made a lot of sense, it resonated. Obviously, a lot of execution to be done. And then subsequently, at the last two days, we've heard largely from Pentaho practitioners who are applying this end-to-end -end analytics platform to really transform their businesses, to really become data-driven, supporting those digital transformations. So, pretty positive story yeah. overall. Um, you know, a lot of work to be done. We got to see how this whole edge to, to outcome you know, plays out. Sounds good. Uh, there's got to be some execution there. Uh, we got to see the ecosystem grow. Uh, for sure. Yes. These guys, guys got a great story. This conference should explode. It's really popularity. a validation for Pentaho. They've been on the market for more than a decade now as the spearhead for the open source analytics revolution in business analytics and in predictive modeling and in data integration, all of it open source. And they've come very far and they're really a blue chip uh, solution provider. I think this show has been a great validation of their, their Pentaho's portfolio presence in the market. Now, Hitachi Von Ventara has a gem of a core asset. You know, clearly the storage market, the data center converged infrastructure, the core Hitachi data systems, uh, uh, pr product lines, are starting to experience the low growth that is such a mature space uh, experiences. Yep. And clearly they're placing a strong bet, Hitachi Ventara, that the IOT, the, the edge analytics market will just boom wide open. Hitachi Insight Group, which was only created last year by their corporate parent, was chartered to explore opportunities in IoT. They've got the Lumata platform. They had um, uh, Hitachi Next, their conference last month, focused on IoT. I think that's, the, that's really the capstone, the uh, Lumata portfolio in this overall story. Now, I think what we're hearing this week is that, great, they've got nice, the components, the building blocks of, of potential growth but I don't think they're going to be able to achieve takeoff growth until such time, Hitachi Vantara. They have a stronger, more credible reach out to the developer community, specifically the developers who are building the AI and machine learning for deployment to the edge. That will require to have credibility in that space. Clearly, it's going to have to be the new set of frameworks such as TensorFlow, MXNet, and Theano, and so forth, they're going to need some sort of a modeling framework, abstraction framework, that sits on top of the, uh, the Pentaho uh, platform, or really across all of their offerings, including Lumata, and enables um, a developer to using uh, the, the, the mainstream application developer to use code, like whether it be Python, or, or, or R, or Java, or whatever, to build the deep learning and AI models at the highest level of abstraction, the business level of abstraction, then to automatically compile those models, which are computational graphs, down to formats that are optimized and efficient to run on devices of all sorts, chipsets of all sorts, uh, that are increasingly resource constrained. They're not there yet. I'm not hearing that overall developer story at this show. I think they've got a lot of smart people, including Brian, are pushing them in that direction. Hopefully next year's Pentaho World, or however they may rebrand this show, I think they'll probably have more of that put together, but you know, Wikibon's waiting to see. Well, and, and that's something that I, I pushed on a little bit this week, and in particular, that requires a whole new go to market. You know, when you, when, when you where, where the starting point is developers, and then you're nurturing those <laughs> developers. And you know, certainly Pentaho has experience with community additions, but that was more to get enterprise buyers to kind of try before they buy. Um, as you know well, Jim, the developer community is, they're very fickle, uh, they're persnickety, uh, they're demanding, 
uh, and they're super smart, and they can be your best advocates, uh, or they'll just ignore you. I mean, it's just kind of the way it is with developers. And if you can appeal to them, you can get a foothold in markets. We've seen it, so I mean, look at Microsoft has done, look at what Amazon has done, you know, certainly Docker, um, you know, on and on and on. Community marketing, that's full bore, this is what the, yeah. User groups, developer days, hackathons, the whole nine yards. The, I'm not seeing a huge emphasis on community marketing in that really evangelistic sense. Um, they need to go there seriously. They need to win the hearts and minds of the next generation developer. The next generation developer who actually won't care about whether it's TensorFlow, backends, or the other ones. They, what they will care is the high level framework and really a collaborative framework that the solution provider gives them for their teams to collaborate on building and training and, and deploying all this stuff. I'm not hearing that from this solution provider, DevOps, really, here this year. Hopefully in the coming years there will be. Other vendors are a bit further along than they are. Um, we see a bit further along uh, IBM is. We see a bit further along like Cl Cloudera and others are in putting together really a developer-friendly ecosystem of components within a broader, really broader data lake framework. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's not been the historical Pentaho DNA. Yeah. Um, however, as you know, uh, to reach out, uh, have a community effort to reach out to developers requires resources and commitment, uh, and it's not a one-shot deal. <laughs> Um, but it also requires a platform. And what we're seeing today is the formation uh, of, of that platform, the reformation of Hitachi into Hitachi Ventara with a lot of resources that has a vision of a platform, of which Pentaho is a critical component, but it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of cultivating. You know, I, I, I presume they're having those conversations internally. They're not ready to have them externally, which is, I presume, why, why they're not having them. But that's something that we're going to certainly watch for you know, in the, in the coming years. Um, what else, you gave a talk this afternoon. Yeah, How AI is eating the edge, um, and it was well received. In fact, when I prepared these, uh, my thoughts and my research about a month ago for this event, I was thinking, am I way too far ahead of where, this is Pentaho, I've been, you know, of course, familiar with them since their inception. Um, I thought, are, they, are there other are users, are there developers, is their community going deep into AI and all the IOT stuff? And, <laughs> The last day or so here at this event, it's like, whoa, everybody's here, here is into that. They know this stuff. So not only was I relieved that I wouldn't have to explain the ABCs of all that, they were ahead of me on a lot of, um, in terms of the questions I got. I mean, and, you know, the questions are, you know, once again, you know, what framework should we adopt for AI? You know, the whole TensorFlow, all those uh -huh. framework wars, which I think are sort of overblown and they will be fairly soon, it'll be irrelevant. But those kinds of questions, develop, those are actually developer level questions that people are just, you know, here, have been coming to me with. Well, you know, I tell you, I'm, I'm no expert in, 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 in frameworks, but my advice would be, whatever framework you adopt, you're probably not going to be using <laughs> that same framework no. down the road. No. So you have to be flexible as an organization. A lot of technical, you know, leaders tell me this, is look, the technology is going to come and it's going to go. Mm -hmm. We got to have great people, we got to be able to respond to the market requirements, we have to have processes that allow us to be proactive and responsive, and, 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 and that your choice of framework should, you should ensure that it doesn't constrict you in those areas. And you know the framework that actually appeals to this crowd, including the people in my room, it's a Wikibon framework, it's also what Brian Hopkins of Forrester to present the three-tier architecture. There's the edge devices, there are the gateways or hubs, there's the cloud. You, you, we call them primary, secondary, and tertiary tiers. Whatever you call them, you put different data, you put different analytics on each of those tiers, and they really, in many ways, in a modular fashion, then you begin to orchestrate with Kubernetes and so forth, these AI-infused apps and these distributed architectures, like, you know, self-driving vehicles or whatever. Um, that, the, the, in the buzz I've been getting here, including in my session, everybody's saying, yeah, that's exactly the way to go. That's a broader, you know, in other words, that pre thinking in those terms prevents you as a developer from thinking the AI has to be some monolithic freaking stack on one single node. No, it actually has to be massively parallel and distributed because these are com potentially very compute intensive applications. I think there's a growing realization in the developer community that when you're talking about developing AI, you're really talking about developing two core workloads. There's the inferencing, which is where the magic happens in terms of predictions and classifications, but even more resource consumptive is the training that has to happen in the cloud. 
and that's data intensive, that's exabytes, petabytes intensive potentially, that's compute intensive. Very different workload. Um, that definitely needs to happen in the cloud and primarily. There's a little bit of federated training that goes out to the edge, but that's really the exception right now. And it, you know, so there's a, there's a growing realization in the developer community that, boy, we better get a really good platform for training. And actually they can leverage, what we've seen in our research at Wikibon is that many AI developers, many deep learning developers actually leverage their Spark clusters for training of TensorFlow and so forth because of in-memory massive parallelism, so forth and so on. I think a lot of, there will be a growing realization in the developer community that the investments they've been making in Hadoop and Spark will just be leveraged for this growing stack for, for training, if nothing else. Well, and then 8.0, we, we, you know, that was sort of the big, the big buzz here. And you, you and I talked at the Open uh, with Rebecca, um, our other co-host, about 8.0. A lot of incremental improvements, but you know what? In talking to customers, that's kind of what they want. They want Pentaho to do a good job of incorporating, curating, you know, open source content, open source you know, pro, uh, platforms and, and products, bringing them into their system and making sure that their customers can take advantage of them. That's what they consistently kept asking for. They weren't freaked out about lack of AI and lack of deep learning and ML and Weka is, is fine. Now, <laughs> maybe it's a blind spot. I don't no, know. No, actually, um, I've had 24 hours since the announce uh, you know, I don't, to chew on it. In fact, I have a Silicon Angle article going up fairly soon with my essentially my trip report of the uh -huh. basic takeaway. And actually, um, what I like about 8.0 is that it focuses on streaming, bringing open source analytic streaming more completely into the Pentaho data integration pl platform. In other words, there's stronger uh, interoperability with Spark streaming, with Kafka, and so forth. But also, they have the ability with an 8.0 to better match real-time streaming workloads to execution engines in a distributed fabric. In other words, what I think that represents in terms of, not only in terms of Hitachi Vantara's portfolio, but in terms of where the industry is going with all things to do with big data applications, whether or not they involve AI, is streaming is coming into the mainstream, pun intended, mm -hmm. and data at rest platforms are starting to become marginalized in a lot of applications. In other words, Hadoop is, data at rest par excellence, so are a fair number of other NoSQL platforms. Those are not going away. Those are the core of your data lakes. But most development is being developed, not most AI and machine learning is being developed for streaming environments that increasingly are edge oriented. So Pentaho, Hitachi Vantara, for 8.0 is actually have put in the right incremental features mm. um, for the market that lies ahead. And so in many ways, I think that was actually a, a well thought out set of re release for this particular event. Great. Okay, some of the highlights here. We had the, 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 uh, a lot of different industries. Gaming, uh, we, yeah. we had experts on autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, the NASDAQ guys on. It was a very interesting segment. The German police mm -hmm. interview you did. Yes. Uh, the chief data officer of uh, uh, community colleges in, in, in Indiana, so a lot of diversity, which underscores the platformness of Pentaho. It's mm -hmm. not some industry specific you know, system, it is a horizontal uh, 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 capabilities platform. Um, final thoughts on the show, uh, some interesting things that you saw, things you learned. Yeah, on the show itself, um, they did a really good job, Hitachi Vantara. Of course, it's a new brand, but it's an, it's an old company, and it's even an old set, I mean, old, established set of product teams that have come together in a, in a hurry, essentially, though it's really been two years since the acquisition. They did a really good job of presenting a, a unified go-to-market message. That's a good start. Um, they've done a good job of the fact that they have these two shows in rapid sequence, Hitachi Next, which was IOT and Lumata, but it was Hitachi Ventara. And now this one, where it's all data analytics. The fact that, that here in the peak of the fall announcement or event season, they had these two shows uh, really highlighting uh, their innovations and their roadmaps for those core pieces of their, of their portfolio and have done a good job of positioning themselves in each case. That shows that they are, the teams are working, orchestrating well in terms of at least go to market presenting their, their, um, their value prop. I think in terms of the actual, the, we've had a lot of great customer and partner interviews on this show. Um, and I think you mentioned gaming first. I wasn't actually on the gaming uh, related uh, Cube uh, interview, but gaming is a hot, of course, it's a hot, hot market for AI increasingly. Sure. A lot of, 
AI that gets developed now for lots of applications involves simulations of whatever scenario you're building, including like you know autonomous vehicles. So gaming is many ways a set of practices that are well established and mature that are becoming fundamental to development of all AI because you're developing synthetic data based on simulation environments. The fact that Hitachi Vantara has strong presence as a data provider in the gaming market, I think in many ways indicates that they've got, um, you know, it's a crowded marketplace. They have lar much larger competitors and deeper pocketed. But I think the fact is they've got all the piece parts needed to be a, a roaring success in this new era. And they've got strong and loyal, very loyal customers, I'm, I'm discovering, uh, not discovering, I've known this all along, but since I've rejoined the analyst space, it's been revalidated that Pentaho, how strong and blue chip they are. Now that they're a new brand in a new era, um, they're turning themselves around fairly well. I, I don't think that they'll be obsoleted by, clearly, I mean, the AI, AI right now belongs to AWS and Microsoft and Google and IBM to some degree. We have to recognize that the Hitachi Ventaras of the world right now are still a second tier in that arena. They probably they probably have to hitch their their wagon to at least one of those core cloud providers as a as a core core partner going forward to really prevail, um, which they can do. Yeah, they can do. All right, Jim, thanks very much sure. for for closing with me. Uh, thanks to you all for for watching. Uh, the Cube puts out a lot of content. You can go to SiliconAngle.com to see all the news. TheCube.net is where we host all these videos. Wikibon.com is our research site. So check that out as well. We got crowd chats going on, crowdchat.net. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Rush of content. We're all about the data. Uh, we're all about sharing. So check those sites out. Thanks very much to the crew here. Great job. And uh, next week, uh, a lot going on. We're in New York City. Uh, we got some stuff going on there. I want to thank our sponsor, uh, without whom uh, this sh show, this CUBE show would not be possible. Hitachi Ventara slash Pentaho. Thank you to Sunny Orlando. Yep, it's great. It's been um, wonderful. This has been The Cube at Pentaho World 2017. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.